scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. Kingdom tool that builds believers and matures believers is the word of God. You have to know this. And if you do not stake your life on the word of God, sooner or later, you will find out that when the excitement goes down, when all the miracles and the spiritual jamborees go down, you will find out that you really do not have a foundation. Are we together? Yes. Prophecy can edify, but in itself it does not build men. Signs and wonders, wise sayings, in fact religious activities coming to church every day coming to pray religiously it does not build people the bible says i commend you to god and then he says to the word of his grace and he says it is the word that has the ability to number one build you up so when you have stamina and strength and continuity in the spirit it is because you have invested in the word are we together Praise the Lord. The times that we live in have demonstrated that many believers did not pay attention on their spiritual development. The, the ease with which people, globally speaking, are swayed left and right by the vicissitudes of life has demonstrated practically that there were lots of religious activities happening around Christian circles. But the growth and the maturity that the word of God brings was not found in many people. And I pray that God will grant us an appetite to really be solid, solid, based on the word of God. I want to encourage our hearts very briefly and then we'll do some housekeeping and we're done for the night. I just thought about what I would share with as many who are here and um, I call it weapons of exploits and victory again I want to share with you weapons of victory and weapons of exploits that these are the kingdom keys that control victory in the spirit every believer has been called into the life of victory every single believer the bible lets us know that we have been called with a high calling in christ every believer is destined to be a true reflection of the life the glory the character and the power of god but sadly many believers never get to manifest the fullness of that potential and I want to share with you for some of you this may be a reminder for some of you this may be truth coming in another dimension for some of you this may be new but it doesn't matter how it comes to you I pray in the name of Jesus that you take this as God giving you a chance once again to pay attention to the voice of the Spirit not paying attention to spiritual things can cost you it can cost you more than you can imagine 
it can cost you your destiny it can cost you your relevance again i have taught and i will continue to teach that god is not an emotional god god is a god of principles and patterns at the expense of the eternal destiny of people god still allows them to make choices whether they desire him or the devil god has never as far as we know had a reason to say look i'm so compassionate about the people in hell i want to go there and bring them out he's made a way it is up to you to subscribe to his patterns if god can allow people go to hell because of their choices then you better take seriously the ways of god because if there was anybody to be considered it would be those in hell first even before those alive and that god can actually sit on his throne and watch someone go to hell watch a nation and maybe an, a, a, a hedonistic nation and yet he's a merciful god it should tell you how strict he is with his patterns are we blessed so i pray that as i share these things once again it will dawn on you and you will respect the truth of god's word and make up your mind tonight that as for me and my house as for me and my destiny as for me and all who are within my care i will stake my life at this word every other thing will come and fail and come and fail but the word of god is the stabilizer of destinies are we together number one the first weapon according to scripture that guarantees the victory of a believer and the exploit of a believer in this kingdom do you know why i'm teaching you this look up if you do not understand the ways of god i hate to tell you this but you will fail in life and the challenge is that when you begin to fail in life you will be frustrated the truths that you hear are the kingdom keys that control exploits in the kingdom and bring you a life of beauty and color and relevance i have said it to you and i have proven it again that where you are and the conditions that surround your life is not an excuse at all from where you are you can take this word and rise to the ends of the earth and i pray in the name of jesus that if once again god will give you the eyes to see this night hallelujah number one the first kingdom key is your love your hunger and your pursuit for god the first key that controls the relevance of a believer in this kingdom is your love your hunger and your pursuit for god in the beginning god in the beginning god this is where many believers miss it you will be surprised how many people have different motives and different motivations for the pursuit of god I don't have a problem with you fasting i don't have a problem with you praying i don't have a problem with you going to church i don't have a problem with you subscribing to the disciplines of a spiritual life but i have said it on this platform that god will continually vet your motive until he finds the purity of pursuit that if at any point god finds out that you are only using him to make a name you will be shocked and surprised that you will do everything right and yet you will not rise you don't have to do wrong things to remain on the floor the the purity and the sincerity of your passion first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 9 i am yet to see one genuine lover of god in truth a genuine lover of God in truth hear what I'm saying a genuine lover of God in truth who ended up a failure a nonentity no sir let God be true and let every man be a liar 
the bible says but as it is written i had not seen nor ear heard neither have entered into the heart of man the things which god has done what prepare 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 means he's expecting you to partake of it if i prepare a meal it means i'm expecting a guest to come god did not prepare them for himself the bible says he prepared them for them that love him the challenge with many believers is that we continue to wallow in self-deception that we love god just because we are around church things listen carefully just because you sing christian songs just because you run away from bad companies wonderful but loving god is more than that a genuine passion for god that is higher than your ambition that is higher than your desire for success and fame that is higher than your desire for a name that is higher than your desire for influence and relevance no you cannot give god that kind of sacrifice and he does not respond back from heaven it's impossible i've had the privilege of knowing relating and meeting extremely great people it's an honor god has given me i know their history i can tell you without any contradiction not one of them who became great from a kingdom dimension just became great by pursuing ambition it was never in their heart to seek power fame money relevance they were just lovers of god that if you never bless me i still love you if i never have the opportunity to serve in your house i still love you if i never have the opportunity to preach i still love you the proof of passion is pursuit if you are passionate about a thing you must pursue it the laxity in our seeking god the laxity in our hunger our drive I've traveled extensively within the maybe the last few months and I've been amazed that just because there was a lockdown for a few months many believers went down and became as cold as ice these are people who were vibrant so don't blame Peter for leaving Jesus just for three days that within a period of four five six seven months without a constructed mentorship many people's lives just went down and you can almost look and wonder did you ever get born again it is a call to re-examine what really brought us to the faith life you've heard me say it again listen the motivation that drives you to seek god will become the sustaining power in your pursuit if that motivation is to know god even if it's after 30 years you've not known him you will keep seeking him but if your motivation is to make a name your motivation is to have fame apostle joshua selman eventually you will be disappointed you will be tired and you will be weary we're discussing the first key that governs a life of victory and a life of exploit in this kingdom our hunger our pursuit many people's prayer altar is nothing to talk about what study life complete zero they can't even find their flash where they put messages again completely many have become literally hedonistic they don't know what you mean to me they don't know i wouldn't trade you for silver or gold i wouldn't trade you for riches untold That's the hunger it takes to win in life. Apps, 
absolute commitment in life and in death is a covenant of loyalty unto God to death that nothing sustains the power to steal my appetite and my love for you show me one person who goes that far with God and gets disappointed and I tell you you lied from the authority of scripture Abraham the lover of God David the seeker of his presence Joseph with the reverence for God John the beloved even Peter these were people who loved God they were not people who used God they were not people who found out that there was a formula called Jesus Christ that makes men successful and they run to him like a drug a pill that you swallow God is calling many of us tonight hopefully return to the place of your fire return to the place of your hunger apostle I want to make money I've now become I'm the breadwinner in my family did you not read in scripture that except the Lord built a house that they labor in vain that build it that except the Lord watches over a city please listen carefully he said the watchmen watch it but in vain that it is vain to wake up early in the morning then to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow it is only God that has the power to give his beloved sleep if God does not give you rest you will not find it anywhere it will look like you are close to rest but 10 years to come you will still be laboring he says come unto me all ye that labor and are weary I will give you rest you don't buy rest in a market you don't buy rest in a school rest is found in his presence so please let tonight be a challenge that I will fan back my relationship with God I will fan back my passion and my hunger for spiritual things number two The second key that controls exploits and victory in this kingdom is your depth of insight into the principles and the patterns of the kingdom. Your depth of insight, not just your insight, your depth of insight into the principles and the patterns. Please, those outside, make sure you are listening very carefully. The principles and the patterns of the kingdom in this kingdom it is light that rules in this kingdom it is light that reigns your day does not break because it's six o'clock your day breaks because the light overshadows darkness listen to what i'm telling you your day does not break just because it is six o'clock if it is 12 noon and your sun has not arisen it will still be called night day is not called day because of the passage of time day is called day because of the victory of light over darkness if the sun rises now it will turn this night into day so waiting for time to change night to day is a total waste of time A man's night becomes day not because time is passing a man's night becomes day because you feast upon the light ah. the light of the spirit illumination insight not just Bible study religiously speaking that you know the ways of God I have spent my life sharing and opening you up to the dimensions of the ways of God the principles that control results in this kingdom they are not a man's opinion they predate even my birth these are not things that were suddenly developed by a man Jeremiah 6 and verse 16 it says to stand ye by the way and to ask that ancient path and that you should search see ask inquire 
and when you find it he said walk in it you can find it and leave it there like many of you found it you rejoice the day that it was taught but you never did anything with it you found it I taught you the keys to wealth and abundance I taught you the keys to influence and lifting I taught you the keys to disarm demons and principalities and powers I taught you the keys to fan the anointing the grace of God I taught you the keys that can convert a situation that should kill you to victory it's called the mystery of exemption you are not in ignorance dear people of God you are a privileged people you have been handed over keys but you found it and you did not walk in it and others found it and they treasured it the ministry of the spirit i taught you that one with god will become a champion i taught you that many people believe too late they believe only when they see the results in your life and when the world begins to celebrate you they say oh i used to know this i commend you to the word i taught you that we will all be great if you listen to what i'm telling you not just if you are around when i'm teaching if you listen my son he says pay attention to my words incline your ears to my sayings when i was teaching some of you were students now you are no longer students some of you have families you are now seeing the gravity of what i was teaching some of you when i was teaching you you had breadwinners who were giving you free money i told you if you did not pay attention it will interrupt your spiritual life Some of you when i taught you you were still little but now life has evolved you to a place where your life is full of responsibilities i demonstrated many times on this stage that if you do not pay attention to these things i taught you on discernment that not everything that looks like god is god that you must discern because if you follow a wrong path it will take you many years to come back again taught you the principles of lifting when you find it walk in it he says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them when I found them in my own life I made up my mind not to teach them alone I said I will walk in it too and glory be to the Lord for what he does today it is not because I am Joshua Selman. Anybody who works this thing sincerely. Many of you, this thing is already speaking in your life now. And I rejoice as I see. All of a sudden, after many years of labor, as if the wings will not grow, finally you are seeing. They that wait upon the Lord, you will always look like a failure until he gives you wings. I've taught you this. Listen, the dealings of God you will never have a normal life when you walk with God. I assure you, get ready for a momentary period of delay and get ready for carnal men to mock your God. Mockery is proof you are doing it right. I taught you already that as you are going, you will get to a point in your life where you will not even be able to describe what is happening to you. I taught you that those days will come, that you will cry, I sang it here that you may weep but he won't stop till you look just like him you may cry but he won't stop till your life just like him you may cry he won't stop till you look just like him I taught you the power of competence that in this kingdom it is not your tribe in this kingdom it is not those biases that a man's competence can veto your background i taught you to sit down to go for materials to wake up in the night to pay the price now while you have the energy he said i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night cometh there are many people today who had the opportunity to learn these things for free. Right now, they are going to have to pay and even travel out of this nation to sit in conferences to learn the same thing God gave them an opportunity. 
Moses, I wrote the commandments. I broke the stone myself. You did not respect how cheap it was. Now you will carve the stone by yourself. While you are chiseling it, you will see that it was not easy. Mastery makes difficult things look easy. But make no mistakes, they are not easy. They are products of understanding the systems that govern them. Are we together? Light. You need illumination. Luke chapter 19, 41 and 42. Luke chapter 19. I taught you about the anointing. That you cannot do ministry just being casually anointed. It will make you angry. It will make you jealous. Nobody will place a demand on your grace. That it is how God anointed, not that God anointed. The world has many anointed people. They don't need anointed people. They need people with a dimension of grace that they can guarantee that will be able to bring heaven to their midst. Nobody will invest in what they can get alternatives for. The Bible says, and when he was come near, he beheld the city. And what did he do over it? He wept. Why did he weep? Saying, if thou hast known even thou at least in this day, the things which belong unto your peace. It says, but now they are hid from your eyes. They are hid from your eyes. The things that make for greatness. The things that make for victory. I told you that we do not seek the Lord because of results. However, somewhere in your Christian experience, results become a consolation to your Christian experience. That you cannot indefinitely begin to serve God without results. One day your loved ones will ask you and say, look, we've given you enough time. We've given you enough time to train. You don't flog a little child for not walking from day one. But after one year, two years, three years, you may suspect that something is going wrong. For many of you, your destiny is overdue for result now. And people are no longer patient with you. They were patient with you from 2014, 15. And right now they are saying, you know what? This your thing is not working. sunlight by day the moon will no more give you moonlight by night Jehovah will be your everlasting light he'll be your glory your strength and your sight the light of the moon will be like the light of the sun must go back to your old notes this night go and look for them where is that note i know the book is torn and you sit down you read what you wrote there lord i receive grace clearly my faith is failing me i need to study on faith what was said about it let me tell you this if all you do is devotionals you will not grow you have to look for specific truths specific truths that relates to the dimensions that your destiny is placing demand of now. Why is it that there is nobody to favor me? There's something wrong. Why are my hands empty? Don't say I don't know. I taught you the mystery of empty hands. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that when he go ye shall not go empty when your hands are empty there is an explanation listen if you want to grow you must humble yourself and tremble at the word giving flimsy excuses will justify mediocrity and keep you small because thou hast love righteousness and hated wickedness it says therefore God even thy God hath given you an oil of gladness that exalts you above your fellows lifting has an explanation you don't just rise like that don't forget that it is God that supervises these laws 
not a politician not a man a man can be manipulated with bribe but God is the one who sits upon a throne that is made of righteousness and justice light you must cry for the knowledge of the patterns of God I've taught you that God in scripture hardly does a thing twice he does a thing once and creates a spiritual system around it for continuity so he's never had to create a man and a woman for continuity of the race in that man and woman he created seeds and he created a system for procreation are we together now yes let me tell you this i prophesied many times here that darkness will come upon the nations i prophesied many times here that the kings of the nations will be brought to their knees that the economies of nations will so st be strangled that above men will be like brass and under them will be like iron he says but the people that do know their god they shall be strong and shall do exploits please you must trust god for grace to settle down let me give you an assignment go and write different dimensions of the kingdom where you desire to see result even if it is to dedicate a separate notebook for them do it faith wealth and abundance spiritual hunger and consistency exemption and victory over demons just pick them one by one and flog it out with destiny flog it out with destiny What is the key that controls spiritual growth? What is the key that controls exemption from evil? What is the key that controls health and wellness? What is the key that controls the anointing? What is the key that controls ever increasing faith? What is the key that controls consistency in this kingdom? Now, when you begin to study them, you find out that you are having exact knowledge. Your depth of insight into the principles and the patterns of the kingdom. I have taught you here again that the glory of God always comes as a confirmation that he's that you have to sit down like a student in a classroom and write down your current belief systems and now begin to find models listen carefully the foundation for true transformation is to find representations of the dimensions you seek to evolve to until you have found models with proven results that reflect what you want to become when you find models first from scripture and then life on the strength of that you can now begin to adopt the principles because you see every man's result sustainable result not this balloon success that people have up today down tomorrow sustainable result is governed by laws and principles the bible says he that strives for mastery is not crowned except he strives lawfully are we together so you want to become a great worshiper like Sam come David Dam like David Dam you want to become wonderful worshipers you are happy with what God is doing in their lives you know I remember external ministrations and for a long time they didn't understand what I was doing because their colleagues were seeming to make progress and I said you guys should sit down this thing that you have will make you local champions in Zaria and you will remain here and be old here I want you to be global I want a situation where one day someone whose whose work you were studying will call you and think it is a privilege that you are with him and I told them sit down and walk the 10 10 naira 5 5 naira that they wanted as honorarium that they can just squeeze in your pocket as if you are stealing I told them leave those things leave the momentary pain stay with God carry fire catch fire be competent sam just returned from house on the rock just for his ministration baby dam just returned from i don't i can't remember where some of these guys you see them flying all over now 
and God is lifting them. They are about to do a project now with some of the top artists in this nation. And I'm putting it together for them. These guys have gone. They will never go down again. I assure you. Now listen. I'm not saying this to brag. I'm saying this to tell you it takes time. But if you can have the stamina, be patient with destiny. So that when you enter the door of greatness, you don't come out in shame again. Because you can enter and when you are vetted and they see that you did not qualify. Have you seen people get admission? And while they are checking their, what they call that thing? They are, they not, they don't say you, you didn't pass this one. And you have to go out. That's how many of you want your destinies to be. Don't mind some of these flashy flamboyant things around that people do. No. Settle with the word and find something of substance that the nations will thank you for. I told them, I said, guys, the world will celebrate you tomorrow. The world will honor you. They will sing your songs. You will go to nations and you will go to places and they will see you. And your songs will become keys that will open doors. But be patient. The grace that you carry is not the grace for money. It's an insult. The grace that you carry is a grace for transgenerational relevance. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Yes. And I'm glad and honored. All these guys, God is lifting them one by one. Tomorrow you will say, I know them. I know them does not make anybody great. Did you pursue after knowledge? Did you pursue with fire? And as I'm saying it now, you people should still sit down. Don't be proud and say, I've started flying. That plane will bring you down if you don't continue. The thing about life is that just because you start a journey does not mean you will remain there. It is even better to not start than to rise to a height and then go down in shame because the assessment comes every once and again. It is not once and for all. That in every move of God in your lifetime, He will find you worthy because you are fresh. New songs coming by the Spirit, new power coming by the Spirit, and a day will come when nations will call you and say, Teach us the ways of the Lord teachers and they will give you what is the prayer request of many people at your beck and call believers hear me god is making your life easy by giving you superior knowledge but the key is your mindset i came from plateau state with all the mindset i received from that region this man came from plateau state with all the mindset he received from that region this man came from kaduna state with all the mindset he received from that region it is up to you to fight this fight of faith and say in the name of jesus i don't approach life like a kaduna person in the name of jesus my body may be in zaria but i make up my mind all of the things that come with my territory i've taught you this listen for some of you this is what is affecting you now you love jesus but right now you have been forced to admit that honestly my background is fighting me backgrounds that have endorsed mediocrity backgrounds that have endorsed irresponsibility backgrounds that have endorsed passing blame to life and destiny oh it's because nobody was there to help me all the uncles who should help me refuse to help me it's not my fault the bible says philippians chapter 2 let's start from verse 1 before we get to verse 5 Therefore, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, any comfort of love, fellowship of the Spirit, bowels of mercy, verse 2, it says, fulfill my joy, how? That ye be like-minded, like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. You go to verse 5, it now begins to tell you, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Jesus was born in Nazareth, but he refused to allow the limitation of that territory. Listen, listen. Living a fake life is not transformation. Finding out the principles that guarantee, I told you why fake what you, what can be real in your life. Are we together? You cannot afford Gary now. Don't put yourself under any pressure. You don't owe anybody any explanation for taking, even if it's water with honor. At least you are not a thief. 
but with the with 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 the nobility of champions you begin to rise one step after another in the name of jesus this mindset of jealousy and envy i come against it in the name of jesus this mindset of spiritual laxity this mindset of looking at someone and saying this one was my classmate no i can't learn from him he was my classmate and you sit down and say look whether you are my classmate or not you are commanding results in a dimension that i'm not seeing show me a dimension colossians 3 and verse 16 to receive with meekness the bible says the engrafted word hallelujah i want to be sincere with you all of you are here i love all of you sincerely with all my heart but let me assure you that all of you are not making the same contribution to, towards destiny and i hate to tell you this but eventually as it is already happening your results even the disparity of it will begin to show the greatest pride of any father the greatest pride of any leader is to see that you rise to become beacons of light i tell you with all humility as for success even if i never increase i thank god god has helped me already my concern is not myself again the principles i've learned will never leave me there is no demon in hell that will make it go no i have signed out of certain realms and dimensions forever till the trumpet sounds but it is selfish if all i was looking for is my personal gain my passion is to see you rise until you become that which god destined for you to be and i pray that once again you will have the discernment to appreciate it hallelujah i risked my life for many years serving the purposes of god there are times many of you may not know there are times that I return back from a meeting and I do not even eat anything. I will come and stand here from 7 o'clock, sometimes till 3 a.m. Pouring my heart to make sure that you get this thing. Now God is giving you a chance. One day is going to be too late. You hear what I'm telling you? One day it is going to be too late. The truths you now hear, one day you will have to travel to the ends of the earth to meet somebody who you knew this truth before him but who pressed in it greater than you you will now sit down and pay thousands of dollars and pounds to learn remember the mistake of moses god cheaply wrote on stones and gave him and he did just because the hand of god was carving it he thought it was easy now he had to go through it the hard way are we together superior belief systems like you have always done now do it with understanding lay your hand on your head and in one minute please cry to the lord who is your maker with all humility father there is something about my belief system that i trust you to help me walk with. don't feel bad the mind of Christ, the mind that serves the purposes of the kingdom, as a global reference, Saria notwithstanding, it is not where you are that matters, it is the inner workings of the word of God in your mind.
to change your belief right from where you are make up your mind to embrace excellence as a culture make up your mind to embrace spirituality as a culture make up your mind to embrace competence as a culture make up your mind that whatever price it will take the the work the 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 little worship expression that this my dear people made. I remember when they made one the first version when i saw it i said what is this i said well done this is this is just a test run go and do something that at least when you see it tomorrow you will not be ashamed are we together because i needed to use their work to introduce them to those i want to introduce them to and you see when you want to meet champions there is a minimum level of competence God has given us the influence and the grace but you have your own work to do before you are accelerated what you should enjoy is leverage and support not to take your entire responsibility if anybody tells you that your worship ministry cannot feed you they lied to you listen to what I'm telling you if anybody tells you your worship ministry cannot feed you they lie to you you will get in one day what is the inheritance of many people for speaking the sound of the spirit to the nations
that you get to a point in your life where you have no need as far as a personal need is concerned you have entered your sabbath forever not for no 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 no. your heart is geared towards the things of the spirit you are not sitting and scratching your head where will my children get their school fees as i want that cannot be god's way but until your belief until your mindset experiences that transition you will continue to rigmarole around life and the challenge is that as time passes your opportunities continue to fade and it gets to a point where your life will be full of pain and stories you do not want number four we have to finish the fourth key that controls victory and exploits in this kingdom is the mystery of your prophetic connection now please listen i want to remind you of a very deep spiritual mystery that many of you may have forgotten the mystery of your prophetic connection these are the systems of the kingdom that control the enviable lifting of people Hosea chapter 12 and verse 13 the mystery of your prophetic connection please keep that scripture there it says and by a prophet who did the work the Lord but it came through the instrumentality of a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet he Israel was preserved it was the Lord that brought them but he used the prophetic now I have taught you listen carefully I pray that God will open your eyes again to see our personal work with God is not based on covenant our personal work with God is based on relationship the reason is because our flesh will not allow us to be flawless in working with God and if he works with us based on covenant we will break the rules too much and we will die so he chose to take it away and allow the flexibility that allows us to evolve and mature but kingdom advancement and success and exploits in life is based on covenant understand this it's not an emotional thing at all kingdom advancement and that includes the advancement of your own life and destiny is based on covenant and this is how god does it watch this john the revelator was caught up to heaven in the isle of patmos and when john saw the heavenly jerusalem he began to describe what he saw and he said he saw the Jerusalem the temple built upon 12 foundations and on those foundations were the names of the 12 apostles heaven not hell not earth was built upon the names of 12 apostles are we together now the way that God advances his purposes please listen very carefully is that God finds men on earth in every generation and in every dispensation he finds men and then God subjects them through a strict spiritual dealing and out of that dealing will birth a covenant between him and them not Old Testament not New Testament that covenant becomes the platform not for their personal relationship with him that becomes the platform for administering the grace and the unction that they will serve that generation with it is not necessarily a measure of their personal spiritual life it's an election of grace 
please understand what I'm telling you so the way God does that is that he now uses those conduits those envoys across the earth to be dispensers of certain spiritual dimensions that will be required for the edification of the saints are we together now that if you ever want to taste of that dimension of God even if you have a vision of Jesus he will still refer you to those individuals as touching the covenant they have with him they are the authorized dispensers listen please they are the authorized dispensers of those dimensions they don't have everything but there is a dimension it's a covenant with blood on it For as long as they are alive, listen to me, for as long as they are alive, they will remain God's principal channel for dispensing that spiritual reality. Here is where the pride of this generation lies in. Our aberrated, incomplete concept of the knowledge of direct encounters with God. And we feel I don't need any man. Jesus Christ has died and opened a new and living way. I agree with you. But the gospel you heard about Jesus, who preached it to you? Are we together? Now, this is how, listen, please, don't miss what I'm about to share. For every one of these spiritual systems the spirit of God hovers around the earth and look for people whose destinies and lives depend on the provision he has given them and he finds a way of bringing them from every nation every tribe and crafts them into that spiritual covenant has nothing to do with your personal plan no the the babies our babies that were born here it was not their plan and their idea where to come from they just the womb that they found themselves coming out from remains their mother are we together now now let me tell you how this works listen carefully there are altars in every family and territory and those altars are managed by familiar spirits familiar spirits are spirits that have dwelt around that region for a long time they have mastered the vulnerability of men they are responsible for creating spiritual patterns of failure are we together and god knows that based on your personal spiritual growth you don't have the grace to fight those altars the dynamics of victory against those altars does not just require prayer and fasting it requires a covenant that has a throne from heaven that marks it please listen to what i'm teaching you disguises when God sees that the devil is planning to repeat the mistakes that destroyed men and women in your family he uses service and submission to bring you under that grace now you don't even know why you came listen this has nothing to do with a good sermon or a good man of God that you like this is about your life and your destiny. In the days of Noah, there was only one system for safety. Ignore it and the flood will kill you. Listen. There are many of you. The battles in the family you came from, if God opens your eyes, 
the awareness of what is on your head waiting to kill you, you will even be afraid. And so God refused to show you, but he brings you and grafts you through a spiritual covenant. Please understand what I'm teaching you. just a place of service it's a spiritual zone of safety while you begin to grow and mature to a point where one day you too can become crafted to become a system of shade for others now watch this because satan was once a light bearer in heaven he knows these systems his assignment is to do anything within his power and draw you away from this prophetic connection. Listen to me. Satan is any other thing but foolish. Are you getting what I'm teaching you now? Listen. When Satan wants to destroy you, hear me. If Satan wants to destroy your prayer life and the rest, that is easy. He can just make you lazy. But when Satan is ready to terminate your destiny and your children unborn, it does not come shortly. He looks at the root of your covering and your grace. And he will attack you and never stop until by any means that you come out of that. He will strike immediately. He will leave you for a while so that you will think you are saved. And one day, it will be like a dream. I'm teaching you this because I love you. And I want us to pray. Listen, when you see certain people, when they finish what they are doing, with all their revelation and power, they package a seed and run to redemption camp and meet Baba Deboe and say, God bless you, sir. We are ready for the next level of life. You think it's human worship. Why is this man God? Those people are not idiots. They know what they are doing. These are the mysteries of the kingdom. You will break these rules, you will pay for it with your lifetime. It is the reason why many people's lifting has been limited. Cheap victories that should be won over your destiny. And here comes these arsenals from hell. They have watched your father. They have watched your mother. Your father was a sincere person, but he did not know this truth. And they shredded his destiny to pieces. And now they come to you. And God says there is an ark of safety. There is an ark. This is not human worship. I know that people have abused all of this rubbish and this nonsense. They teach you sound doctrine. Hallelujah. Your prophetic connection. It's not about worshipping a man. You do that, that's idolatry. It's about a recognition. that the battle that is before me is not just about me the devil is already waiting for my children the devil is waiting for my brothers and my sisters and some of them are not even born again it is your own connection that is now spilling over to help them while they get born again listen there are many people who before they started tithing they started prospering they didn't even know why it was later they found out that this thing oh, as this man obeys scripture there is a covenant connection your leg does not have to eat to be fed it just has to make sure food enters your mouth when your mouth is eating your leg is happy too because it knows that the nutrients will get to it many believers across the globe this is not just a Nigerian thing. This is an African thing. There is an attack on destinies. And the way Satan is doing this now is that he is coming against your covenant connection. Through 
lack of discernment through dishonor through lack of spirituality i assure you you are not even why he's attacking you he's looking at something bigger than you and if you let him he will mess up your life hallelujah you believe what i just shared with you there are doors that will not open because you are there no you don't have the power to access the keys by yourself there are keys the key is not a metal the key is blood it's not every door that opens to keys there are doors that the key that opens them is blood I say this to you because the Lord wants to lift you and the Lord wants to honor you the Lord has so graciously invested his grace but I want you among these spiritual principles settle this thing with destiny there are real altars you better believe it now our parents did a lot of bold face and those things destroyed their destinies and now we're a generation that by the privilege of God's grace is granted us access to light. Your prophetic connection and by a prophet, the Lord God brought Israel out of Egypt. When they were dry bones, in Ezekiel 37, he said, son of man, command these bones to live. The bones had the voice of God and they did not move until the man he had authorized spoke then the bones started moving there are victories that you can step into cheaply this is why many times many people do not understand but you can be fighting battles in the spirit and in dreams and suddenly some of you may see it maybe you may see my face or see something just come and just keep a signature of victory it's not me is the spirit of god but it comes through the guise of the grace and the channel that he has put to bless you hallelujah please understand this there is no big manism with prophetic connection there is no let me be connected until i become a big man let me be connected until i prosper let me be connected no, that that is nonsense There is an altar in Zaria for those of you who do not know I've been long enough in this city I have seen the spirits that govern this territory there are wicked spirits that sit upon this city one of the reasons why I came is because I heard that kidnapping and terrorism and all this had started in Zaria I knew what had gone wrong it was the reason why I came I knew that there was something that had gone wrong in the spirit because this covering is not just for members it can also be for territories you think it's pride and carry your ignorance and keep moving there see we are too young to sit down and begin to debate about certain ancient kingdom mysteries while we do this we empower darkness over our lives I saw a vision in 2018 of a terrible destruction that came upon this city I saw people being killed like chickens I fasted dry for three days and said Lord it will not stand it will not stand why will God's people be shredded like chickens like this brothers and sisters please hear me I speak to you by the spirit the days and the times that we live in require exactitude of spiritual understanding you will miss out on a key in the spirit and it will empower darkness
Jesus in John 17 said, All that you have given me, I have kept. And none is lost except the son of perdition. He had to account for the souls connected to him. Jesus, before the father. There are many of you, there are times that I see dangerous things that are coming. And you may not even know. The Lord reveals them to me. And I stand up by the spirit. And I repeat. You just know that there was turbulence for a few days. And then rest just came. See, fatherhood is, is, is a covenant with wisdom. You don't have to say everything. I have seen many people here. That whose families, whose marriages, whose destinies would have been shredded off by demons. But the key is an understanding. For as long as you sit down and allow yourself to be misled by nonsense, you expose yourself. Please, you don't have to come and be dropping money here if you don't know what you're doing. But I am telling you this thing. My life. Listen. I'm teaching you mysteries of the kingdom. If you don't know this thing, I promise you, you will pay the price with your life and your destiny. This may be the reason behind the mysterious occurrences in our lives. The first question is not what is happening to my destiny. The first question is where is your prophetic connection? Where is your prophetic connection? Hear me. Listen. Don't just succeed. Know why you are succeeding. Don't just say I am favored. Know where it's coming from. Don't just say I am anointed. Know where it's coming from. The day that your mind forgets he said let it not be when you have built houses and done this you say my power very costly destiny mistakes that people continue to make across the globe and they pay the price for foolishness and ignorance Listen, let me tell you this. If you are a true son and a true daughter in this ministry, there are graces that must speak in your life. Believe what I'm telling you. The key word is true, genuine, by the spirit, in the sincerity of your heart, from the bowels of your spirit. It says thou shall anoint Aaron and anoint his sons that I, as I was with him I will also be with his sons it's a covenant hallelujah Listen to me. We're about to pray. Many people's destinies have been reduced to nothing. There are people who have connected themselves with wisdom and began to rise with the wings of eagles in strange dimensions. In the midst of the lockdown, there are people who have experienced favor and liftings because this thing is by covenant. By covenant. There are people who are saying there is a casting down but there are others who are truly saying there is a lifting up we are going to pray we are going to pray and in one minute listen I like you to challenge the powers and the altars that want to speak your destiny to destruction that in the name of Jesus 
I am aware of the name of the Lord, Yeshua HaMashiach. I am aware of the altar and the spiritual covenant. The tribe that I am part of in the spirit. Please pray in one minute. Seke parakatos, embratos ke paratos se seketa. Shkabalanda kabalanda salata shkabalata. Seberekatos, the Lord rebuke you. Altars of failure, the Lord rebuke you. Altars of weakness, the Lord rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, we are a family connected by understanding, connected by intelligence. There are blessings that are upon this spiritual family. There are mysteries that are upon this spiritual family. I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. This is a house of prayer. My prayer life cannot go down. This is a house of the world. My world life cannot go down. This is a house of power. There cannot be weakness in my life. This is a house of grace. This is a house of lifting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One more prayer point and then we'll sit down. I like you bring your family prophetically and say even though they may not be here because I am connected to this grace I declare Satan take your hands off my family members in the name of Jesus every report that is against the counsel of God. I come against it. I call upon the God of Cheshuron. Arise in your might and power.
One more minute. Pray. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And Elisha carried the mantle and stood before Jordan and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he smote that ground, the sea opened hither and thither. Listen, please listen to this. Let me give you an assignment. Study the graces that are in this spiritual family study it study it by the results you see it is God's commitment to you don't just say everything here work for me that's not a wise prayer study it study it There is no territory that does not open for this grace. Why is your life locked? Why are doors not opening? You're going to pray one prayer. Lord, the spirit of rebellion and dishonor in the name of Jesus, let it get out of my life forever. I fight you like I fight Satan. I fight you like I fight Satan. And if any man draws back, my soul will not find pleasure in them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to speak over your life. You don't have to kneel. Please stand. But I want you to believe it. I've told you I'm a product of many anointings. Listen, I wish I were not the one teaching this. So you don't think it's just a human being trying to get people to love you or believe it. No, not at all. I have seen Jesus. I know the mysteries of the kingdom. Someday you will believe this. But I pray for you that you will not be like Lot's wife. Everything you once enjoyed and you are no longer enjoying in the name of Jesus I stand by the mercy of Jesus Christ who is the Christ of God I reintroduce that dimension back to your life I reintroduce that dimension back to your life every dimension of grace and unction that no longer seems to work in your life in the name of Jesus like the hair of Samson came back I prophesy to you in the name of Jesus may that grace return back with power
every dimension of favor that must speak in your life as proof that you are part of this spiritual family in the name of Jesus may that grace rest upon your life I change every negative circumstance over your life and your family now listen this is a family mysteriously blessed of God I pray for you whatever makes resources run away from you by the spirit of grace from today may those doors be open deeper and deeper this is a house of prayer whatever has happened to your prayer life right now fresh fire on your altar This is a house of revelation, illumination and mysteries. Everything that has blinded your eyes from seeing the keys that control the door that should open tonight, Shabakatosiata, in the name of Jesus, may your eyes be open. Hear me. This is a house of character. When you find yourself arrogant, pompous, it is not this grace that gave it to you. I speak to you. The grace to be of solid character. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. This is a house of influence. Access to systems and structures. I pray for you and your loved ones in the name of Jesus may that grace rest upon you this is a house of mysterious exemption from evil mysterious exemption I pray for you everything that is about to hijack your destiny may this grace and exempt men from calamities exempt you in the name of Jesus This is a house of advancement. I speak to you that the level you are is enough. You, are, you have stayed there long enough. I push you by prophecy. Step into a next level spiritually, in influence, in your destiny, in the name of Jesus Christ. This is a house where your works are rewarded. In the name of Jesus everywhere your contribution and your value has been ignored either appearing as joblessness or not making a demand of the grace you carry from today I compel men to honor and reward what you carry in the name of Jesus Christ this is a house of honor I pray for you the unction that distinguishes you among the crowd I declare may that grace mantle your life now every bad news that has been projected that between now and December already there is an orchestration of darkness by the spirit of grace we cancel that occurrence over your life over your children over your parents over your family i declare upon your life that you will only see the goodness of god in the name of jesus christ amen god bless you please be seated for a few hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son Attend to my sins, incline thy ears to my words, let them not depart from thy eyes, and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well.
that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us thank you